Liberal MP Nur Mohammed completely comes unglued in his desperate attempt to justify the Marxist position of the Liberal Government of Canada. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The Heritage Committee got together to further investigate the oncoming pressure from the Liberal government to increase censorship in Canada. There was They touched on C-11, C-18, and C-63, and one of the witnesses was picked on and badgered, centered out by MP Nur Muhammad because she had deigned to speak out against these three bills. As a constitutional lawyer, she pointed out that they are both unconstitutional and that they are on a slippery slope. She mentioned some really interesting things about C-18 and C-63. She had a very good opening that I didn't put here because I felt like it kind of, it might merit its own video. But I did start with the attack from the Liberal MP, Nur Mohammed, who is clearly upset with the witness for having the temerity to speak out against censorship, but having no real justif justifiable basis for it, other than the fact that that way there he can stop people from saying, Things like we don't like Justin Trudeau, and I think that that's one of his and his only motivation because he had no articulation in any way, shape, or form. He was about as subtle as a, a sledgehammer. I'm going to let you see it a little bit. For those of you frequent viewers of this channel, know free freedom of speech is the one is my hill to die on, and so I will have some things to say during this. All right, let's get into it. Um, I just want to, if you could just take a moment to clarify for me something that I want to make sure I heard correctly. When you were talking about Bill C-63, did you say that we were too tough, uh, the law was too tough on hate speech? Yeah, so okay. I think that the issue is with statutizing the definition, which is an inherently subjective definition. I think that the, there's an issue with the ability to add a new penalty uh, when there's an, another offense committed to uh, oh. basically overcharge defendants. Got it. Okay, so I'll give you. I can give so, you. No, no, that's that's fine. So I guess what I what I want to dig into is what would you say to members of the Jewish community or the Muslim community who right now who are seeing incredible spikes in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia that is resulting in violent. Um, physical assaults on people and institutions. The argument many of them make is that hate speech leads to these things, these types of actions. Would you agree with that? Now, I wonder, I have a couple of things to say on this, but I will say, first, let's speak from a psychological point of view, from a standpoint of a psychiatrist, or most importantly, from a person who may have been victimized with physical violence. People will say, look what you made me do. Even this guy, he will try to say, oh, because that's happening, they made me write this legislation. No, that's not true at all. You chose to do that. It's your choice. It's not my fault. I don't have that kind of power over you. And I am certainly not taking responsibility for your actions and or your behavior. So those people that are lashing out at each other, those people that are, are targeting people, churches and burning them to the ground doesn't seem to have anything to say about that i'd like to point out though there's nearly 150 nationwide burnt to the ground doesn't want to mention that apparently there's a, it's a very selective protections that come across the mind of mp Mor nur mohammed i suppose that's a different video and this one i would like to point out that if an individual hears something that they don't agree with or hears something about a group that they that is going to incite them to violence, that's only because they were all, already prepared to be violent. And hearing it is just an, a flimsy excuse, just a way to let go, just a way to justify. But in no way, shape, or form is the responsibility of the of the individual that, that transmitted the message. And only someone with a, with a flimsy attempt to manipulate this constitutional lawyer would, would think that they had an I gotcha moment. He spent all told in this inter, in this uh, meeting nine minutes trying to get this woman to just give him one I gotcha, and she didn't. And before I forget, to her credit, the CCFF, can he, CCF, is these are the people that got the uh, Supreme Court to agree that um, the liberals 
instituting of the Emergencies Act was unconstitutional. So these aren't, they're not a joke, right? I mean, they're, they're serious people. You know what I mean? They've come before the Supreme Court and all of that kind of stuff, which is to their credit, right? So violence, <laughs> of course, criminalized already. And I think that there's an issue uh, with all kinds of things like bail conditions that repeat violent offenders are not put actually put <laughs> in prison. Uh, so please criminalize violence. Put people who commit violent acts. No, but my, my question is, do you see that, do you believe that there is a correlation between incitement and hate speech and people's responses, or do you think that people act independent of those two things? So incitement to violence is also criminalized, and okay. we take no issue with incitement to violence. Okay. okay. So let's just, uh, I, I appreciate um, very much you speaking about the importance of, of freedom. Do you believe in uh, freedom of expression as being beyond just words? This guy is so weak. And of course, all he's, his, he's just trying to, to find an I gotcha moment. That's why he keeps messing with his iPad going up and down like he's got something to read, but he really is just struggling to think of something to say. But to her credit, Miss Van Gein is uh, a little bit more formidable than he was expecting, I should, I should think. Of, of course. Okay. Uh, so do you think that um, a woman should be able to wear a niqab? Of course I do. Do you think that it was inappropriate for the conservative government to put forward in, in the last time that Stephen Harper's promised, do you think it was inappropriate for them to put forward a niqab ban on women? I'm, I don't have a comment on, on that. I don't, I'm not familiar. No, but I'm not asking you. So, okay, okay. So you're not familiar with the proposed niqab ban? I do not think that we should, government should ban religious clothing. Okay. So you, okay, so you just, you do not think that government should ever ban religious clothing, correct? I do not think they should. Okay. I mean, that government uh, is doing that now. Do you believe, um, do you believe in a woman's right to choose? Of course I do. Do you think that, is it, is it a... To, to choose how to access health care, you mean? Like, to choose... To choose whether or not she can get an abortion. Yes, I, does it, that's my personal viewpoint. Fantastic. I, I does it, does right it concern you? Um, does it concern you that conservative governments uh, in certain provinces, and does it concern you that members of the conservative party are seeking to legislate um, eliminating or taking away a woman's right to choose? I'm not sure what what you're referring to. I'm asking you specifically if a conservative talking about abortion right now. I'm asking you because if you, I'm asking you if you believe in that freedom. What the what the connection is? I'm asking you if you believe in that freedom. Order here. What's the relevance to this? Point of expression. Order? Expression. Expression. expression takes different forms. Well, I've asked the question, and as you well yeah, know, but you're hounding her now. That's the point. Oh, now you're concerned. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, let's I, let's. I, I don't feel hounded. I just don't understand. Okay, the, uh, let I, me I ask the question differently. I Do you believe people have the right to express their views on abortion? <sighs> See, and he of course couldn't handle that answer either because you're not. What he's trying to say is that you're not allowed to say people shouldn't get an abortion, right? And she just said, "I believe people are have the right to express their opinions." Now, the liberals are desperate, desperate. And they know that they get a lot of their voter base from women. So they're trying to make issue of abortion again, even though it has been codified in law for most of, you know, for let's call it 50 years off the top of my head. It was handed down not by the legislative body, but by the um, criminal body, by the, the courts have made that decision. And I will cover it because they're so desperate. I mean, they're in, they're in committee trying to talk about freedom of speech and they want to move the needle to trans rights and abortion. Like the, 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 the transparency of it is insulting. The, la the, the, the waste of taxpayers' time and this woman's time is insulting. And this guy, of course, had nothing. He said, well, what's the relevance? And he goes, uh, uh, expression. What do you mean? What is the relevance to the question on the table of censorship, bud? Because the freedom is called freedom of expression. So where is the connection there? Of course, he's not trying to make a connection. He doesn't have a connection. What he's looking for is a sound bite so that he can try to make it sound as if the conservatives 10 years ago tried to ban the, the hijab or whatever, the kneecap, whatever, which one he calls it, because there's three or four different styles. What I would like to ask Mr. Nur Mohammed is, where are all the women that are not 
interested in wearing that. What's your position on them, Mr. No Muhammad? Because I'm telling you right now, in many countries, when they try to take those things off in public, they get arrested for it. I think that's really the question we should be discussing. However, that's a different, different subject and not necessarily per pertinent to this particular video, and I, I digress. I get a little fired up when I see people try to become flimsy with very important issues. This, this freedom of expression is, there's nothing, there's no other fundamental right that we deserve more than this. Now they want to take away homes, they want to take away jobs, they want to take away our rights, they want to cram us into a, a three square kilometers, and they don't want us to be able to complain about it. It's only a second until they decide somebody's saying, uh, I don't like the Liberal Party, is hate speech. Like, it's... it's it's, a, it's not even a slippery slope, it's a water slide. All right. Okay, do you believe that people have the right to legislate whether or not a woman has the right to choose? I mean, now you're talking about um, sort of parliamentary sovereignty issues which are well beyond the scope of, uh, I mean, Parliament can legislate on all kinds of things and then they're put in check by the Supreme Court. I really don't... Okay, so... Legislation as, like, Parliament is sovereign. So if they, Parliament decided, so, so if Parliament decided to do certain things and pass certain laws, then that would be sovereign. No. And that would be the law, and that's what we should all adhere to, and there should be no opposition. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that's not how it works. Well, I, I really, I'm, I'm a little confused by the line of questioning. Parliament can legislate. Legislation is subject to your constitution, okay. which is, so, can then be reviewed by the court. Okay, Congress. so we can get more into this later. Do you, are you concerned, or would you, were you concerned <laughs> when uh, the, former, the former premier of New Brunswick, who has recently transitioned into being the former um, premier and premier Moen in Nova Scotia, are trying to put restrictions on a child's right to use the pronouns uh, that they want to use? That's an issue that we haven't taken a position on at the CCF. That I'm asking you your opinion, though. I'm asking you your opinion. I'm here speaking as a representative of an organization. I'm not going to give you my opinion on that particular issue, which is a live issue. So you see now he wants to try and talk about provinces, right? And let's remember something. In Canada, health care is the, is the domain of the province. And any time the federal government tries to stick their nose in it, they are overreaching. When the, Trudeau stands up in the House of Commons and says, I have held back money from provinces because they refuse to uh, give people whatever it is. I'm in my head saying, you can't tell them what to do with that money. You have to give them every penny because it's theirs. And by holding that money back, you are violating so many of the, of the basic tenements that hold this country together. Again, I, I get, I, I'm a little bit fired up. Because this guy gets on my last nerves because he has no argument. He's just simply trying to manipulate or try to twist people's words. She said she doesn't like Bill C-63. She said she didn't like C-18. And I cut out maybe two minutes. Just the, you know, the, the chair s spoke for a couple of, a couple of times. Otherwise, it's, he got two rounds at this woman. And I mean, let's be straightforward. She completely kicked his ass. Let's, let's, let's let him try to finish. Is there, are there limits? Should there be limits to freedom of speech? I mean, we're a civil liberties organization, so we believe in very broad protections for freedom of expression. Should I be able to describe black people using the N-word? I don't think that you should describe black people using the N-word. But should I be allowed to? I don't. The current law permits you to do that. And, okay. Um, That's a statement of the law. That is a, that is a statement of do you, the law do you, that is right now. But do you consider that hate speech? never talk that way and I don't think you would either. I certainly would not. I, cer I certainly would not. Um, my question to you though is if we have very broad limits to what people can say or not say um, do we not start to see that there becomes risk to other people's safety and security? So for example uh, if somebody were to say that oh all Muslims are terrorists and we need to worry about them or all Jews support genocide we should be worried about that or all Chinese people are complicit with the CCP or making nonsense statements like that which can start to undermine people's safety and security. Do you think that we should limit that or do you think that's okay? That's a very interesting point Mr. N MP No Mohammed. It's almost like we have been hearing for the last 10 years, especially from governments like the Liberal Party, white privilege and male toxicity or toxic masculinity. 
Do you think that that undermines the rights or the puts those people in an inherent danger? I bet you don't have any problem using those terms in any way, shape or form, or you don't have any problem slamming Christians either. Cause I noticed that you're not mentioning any of those groups in all of your examples. You've talked about uh, the premiers wanting parents to have the right to know if their children are going through major, major life changes. However, when, when mentioned, when you, when you bring up all of these groups, you don't mention Caucasians, Christians, you don't mention masculinity or males. All of these people are been under onslaught for at least a decade now. All of these groups, excuse me, have been under serious onslaught. And I don't hear a single word coming out of your mouth about that. I just really feel like we have to look at it in its full application and how I know plenty of guys who use the N word, right? I just, I forgot because I'm so wound up, but there are plenty of people in this world that use the N word. You can turn on any rap song. You can see that you can turn on Dave Chappelle and you can hear that word. Every second, third sentence. I mean, he refers to everybody in that word, in that, with that word. And now all of you are sitting there listening to me going, hey, wait a minute. Will we now arrest a black guy for hate speech because he used that word to refer to the guy that he's known for 20 years? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. How do we, how do we make that application? Oh, now you want to have car votes. So where does that line end? Right? Do we start to say to ourselves, oh, no, 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 because you're, you're, so now anybody can use the term. There's no way that you can limit speech and it not blow up in your face. The only thing that you can do is continue to limit speech, which is why it was put into the Constitution of the United States of America, the first country on earth in the history of mankind that encoded in the basics of its country the right to say what they feel and what they want, not to manipulate, not to lie, not to use misinformation like the example of MP Nur Muhammad here, but to speak truth to power. Like for me to say to Mr. Nur Muhammad right now, his examples are ridiculous. They don't make any sense to the conversation. And you might as well just come out and say that you prefer the ability to limit what people have to say because it might hurt your feelings. And then you prove the, the, the reason for having it, right? Because people would have abused other people, like the king would have done something to a person because they said, we don't like the king. Would have put him in the Tower of London or wherever they put people. So the right to, to say, I don't like the king is part of the, is part of the conversation. It's part of the constitution. It's, it's not the Canadian constitution, mind you, but it should be part of the Canadian constitution. Because that's what we're talking about. It's only a second until you, till they come chasing at your door saying, oh, you put up a post that you don't like Justin Trudeau, so we, here we are to arrest you. And if you don't agree with us, we're going to give you 15 years. Yeah, I know the guy that in the cell beside you, he killed four people and he's only going to get eight. But you said a bad word. You said you didn't like Justin Trudeau, so now you're a big meanie and we're coming after you. Or it won't matter, right? Even if we remove Justin Trudeau and put, it in, put in the next person. All we have to care about is how fragile their ego is, how fragile their narcissism is, how desperate they are to control the narrative, how desperate they are to control the message. And then we're all doomed. So yeah, you might not like the idea of it and out of respect for certain people, you shouldn't use certain words. I get that, but you can't codify that in law because to make a law equal, it has to apply equally to everybody. And you can't apply that to a, a large portion of the society, which makes it an unjust law, which makes it, it just becomes institutionalized discrimination, which I thought we've been talking about getting rid of for the last 20 years. So I'm confused by Mr. No Muhammad's position. But don't worry, he's not done talking foolish so let's let him give him a chance maybe maybe he'll pull it out yet that's not limited currently under the law even under hate speech law the, the, that is 
the current hate speech law would not prohibit statements like that, as odious as they are. But and that's actually not true, though. But that's not simply untrue. There are no. It's not untrue. It's not. So okay. So just to go back, so we will disagree. Public. It would be incitement. Okay. So incitement. Which, okay. Which is a much higher threshold than what you're describing. As as terrible as the speech that you're describing is, and you should and, and it should be permitted. Your 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 position is that should continue to be that should be permitted. That's not even. No, but my question to you: Should it be permitted? Government is proposing do it. My question to you is: Should that type of speech be permitted? Is it okay to say those things? It is not okay to say those things, but it is legal to say okay. those things um, in Canada. I, okay. It's not okay to say those things, but it's said every day. It just depends on which side of the coin you're coming from. I mean, I hear all kinds of disparaging remarks. I see them. I'm not foolish I, I watch the internet i'm gen x so you're gonna have to you know you gotta have a thicker skin to come at someone like me but i have people that i would have considered friends who use that word to talk about their father you know what i mean this guy's just trying to force her into it i told you he's just trying to get this i got you moment and all she told you was the law currently permits it and then what i what i want you to understand is that she said the threshold is much higher to what that means is, so let's say the police or the crown charges me with incitement, right? Incitement to violence, incitement to hatred. That's the guy who's like, let's burn it all down. Uh, you know, the guy that's getting everybody fired up. Now, they have to prove that my intent was to incite them to be, you know, aggressive or whatever. Let's use violence. So incite them to use to be violent, or let's use racist. Incite them to be to be racist. They have to prove that. So the threshold is much higher than the legislation of C sixty three, which just is who's in C sixty three. You're allowed to. You can just assume that somebody's going to say something later, and the judge will make you put on a bracelet, an ankle bracelet, or something. I mean, it is the most insidious legislation in the history of mankind. It can do only one thing, and that is destroy the country. Because there's no, there's no way people are going to put up with that. And, and I, I don't mean, I just mean anybody. I mean, think of how many people ran away. They crawled. They, 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 they escaped, you know, tigers in the jungle and, and, and all kinds of men who would have taken them and done horrible things to them. Because they were running toward freedom. Only to get here and find out that the liberal party is about as far from liberal as the word can get. People are not going to tolerate it. This vision that they have is rooted in. Okay, we're going to put up with this. He's got one more segment here that I've carved out, and uh, we'll let you try. And, but, I mean, the, he's clearly now in tatters trying to, on the one hand, blame trans rights, and then it's uh, now he wants to talk about the, the Jewish-Muslim war that's been happening for, you know, since 680 like the the reach the desperation to justify saying oh you're not allowed to say that so we're going to arrest you we're going to monitor your keyboard you're not even allowed to say it get upset in a video game you're not allowed to say it if unless you're of a specialized group i mean the, his own words trip up the legislation right there and then how does that go over you walk into the courtroom and you say no no that you know that n word was used by me who is an african descent toward another fellow who's also from African like you know what I mean like how do you how do you apply that law evenly and equally and when a law a law can't be applied evenly and equally especially in British common law it can't be a law it's on its very face unconstitutional these liberals are just desperate to clamp down on us just desperate because they can't handle their, their egos are so fragile, it appears that their egos are so fragile, they can't hear any criticism or any scrutiny in any way, shape, or form. And I think that's the issue that they need to be discussing. They should take a few years and go to a therapist and, and try to get to the root and, and understand why they're so fragile. But I suppose that's a different video. All right, let's let this guy finish. Let's let's move on to a topic we didn't get to because I only have a couple minutes left. Um, one of the challenges that we have seen recently is um, to how it is 
that um, gender-affirming care and kids and young people and others that are not children um, are seeing when it comes uh, to their rights and their freedom of expression. Do you agree or disagree with conservative politicians that continue to push um, rhetoric and uh, limit freedom of expression for trans people? So what... Are you asking me, should politicians be able to make statements on what type of medical care or... Should politicians be able to regulate what type of medical care or what type of freedom people have to express their identity? That, that, I mean, that's not a freedom of expression. That's not a two the, issue. So it's not, so, so freedom of expression when it comes to trans rights are excluded, is that what you're saying? No, she didn't That's say that. That's not what I'm saying. So my question to you is, should politicians be in a position to regulate the freedom of trans people or the LGBTQ2S community from expressing who they are and seeking care and treatment to be able to be who they wish to be or who they are? Is that happening? Can you give me the example? Of yeah, there happening? have been, absolutely, there have been positions in the Conservative Party, including at their last convention, to seek to ban uh, children from accessing gender-affirming care. Do you agree or disagree with that? So I, I, I maintain that that is not an expression issue. That would be, depending on what you mean by gender-affirming care, there's a broad spectrum of what that could include. It could include surgery. It could include pronoun use. It could include um, pharmaceutical interventions. And Thank you I mean, very much, Ms. Surgery is not Gein. a form of expression issue. There could be a Section 15 claim in, in yep. this. So you see how he couldn't wait for that clock to run out because he knew that guy was just making a fool of himself, right? He, and as a result, he embarrasses the whole committee because really the, the, the guy was trying to score points on to, on hoping that people will vote for him that are of the, uh, the um, trans issue, like the trans community. Sorry, that's the word. So I think that's why the liberals are just talking about it all the time. They're talking about the trans rights issue and they're talking about abortion all the time. I mean, we're here talking about a very serious discussion, like a very serious topic, and he wants to move the needle into both of these things and throw the word conservative, conservative, conservative in as many times as he wants so that he can get these sound bites and put them up on the Twitter or the TikTok or whatever he happens to be using. I like that she didn't fall for any of it. I think that she completely destroyed this guy's narrative. And I think that they were all looking at him a little bit sad, right? Like they were a little bit feeling sorry for the guy. He must be desperate in his, his writing. He must be falling to shred like to pieces. I don't know. I didn't look up as what his writing is. I don't really care because I find that his logic is, is flawed and I don't, I take issue with anybody who doesn't agree, agree with freedom of speech. Now I don't see how freedom of speech or freedom of expression has anything to do with because the issue that they're the, at large, what they're talking about is the medical uh, um, transitioning, not the necessarily the school transitioning. Like he mentioned the school transitioning when he mentioned New, uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, where parent teachers don't get have to tell parents when children are, are behaving in a certain way at school, which is one issue. And then he tried to talk about how um, 12 year olds can't get life altering surgery, you know, under 16, I believe it is, it might be 18. I don't know. I'm not that versed in it because I don't see them as an issue of freedom of speech. I do see that, um, some of them are parental rights, which I think that we should be afraid that the government wants to take parental rights away from people in any way, any form of government, whether that be the school or the, the liberal federal government, I should say. But that is not the topic that we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss how this lady who's a constitutional lawyer completely destroyed this guy, even though he tried to ambush her and get her to say a soundbite that would make give him an aha and I gotcha moment. I mean, the, the screen on his iPad is probably going to be worn down in that one zone. He was going up and down with his fingers so often. I guess he just didn't have anything to say, but he wanted to try. She mu He must have been, frame uh, what I think is, he must have been part of the framework for C-63 because she spoke about C-63 when in the conservative round when they asked her some questions about the, about the constitutionality of C-11 and C-18. And she said, well, the real one that I'm worried about right now is C-63. That guy must have been in part, part of that. He must have been in the framing of that because he just lost his mind, right? I mean, he came out guns blazing, and then they decided that he was going to let him go guns blazing again for the second round. The one woman gave up her time to him. The uh, One of the liberal MPs said, well, I'll just pass my time over to this guy, MP Nur Mohammed. 
And really, if you ask me, except for maybe the sound bites that they're going to try to edit out and they don't have any problem editing it out, right? Like they don't have any problem taking, taking it out of context. They love to do that, right? They won't have any issue with that. So I suppose that in that sense, they got a lot of material for their social media feeds. And you and I get to see that they don't really have an idea of why they want to shut down freedom of speech. They just know that they do. And that should be a clue for you and I. That should be something that we should be aware of because there is no justification, right? There's only the implication, right? There's only the idea that we can say, oh, you're a big mean meanie and we don't want you to say X, Y, Z in the future like we're Tom Cruise and, you know, we're the minority reporter where that movie was called and you're going to commit a crime in the future. So now you're going to not be able to go online or whatever it may be. Like we're going to somehow punish your life because somebody thinks you might say something sooner or later. I mean, what kind of law is that? What kind of rule is that? That makes some of these theocratic uh, rules look ridiculous, right? Like, I mean, that's like the people who say, oh, that's like the blasphemy law, right? Oh, they said blasphemy. No, I didn't say any of that. But the next thing you know, they're targeting Christians in all kinds of countries. They, they get accused of blasphemy which is what you're just des- we're describing, right? You're describing a, bl- a set of blasphemy laws that are not allowed to talk about, say, the leader, like just like they would have had in, I don't know, Iraq or under Saddam Hussein or like they would have had in under Putin's Russia, let's say, or Stalin's Russia, most certainly. And then there's nobody listening to me right now that wants to have that applied to them. And the fact that you don't want to have that applied to you should tell you that you don't want to have that applied to somebody else. And if you can't stand somebody telling you something you don't want to hear, right? If you don't want to hear that you're, you know, I don't know, whatever it may be, right? If you can't handle that, the problem isn't them saying it. The problem is you hearing it. You're the concern and you should work on why you can't stand to hear it. Not why you think that somebody shouldn't be allowed to say it. Because when you start to stifle creativity, when you start to stifle humanity in any way, shape, or form, well, let's look at the example, right? The American culture, it wasn't stifled, and for the longest time, one of the greatest cultures on earth, because they weren't stifled. And yet every other culture on earth that was hang-tied and hog-tied went nowhere. I mean, when you consider the fact that every place east of Germany all the way to Russia was a one united body and they were flat broke right up to the 90s because then the wall came down and they got to do what they wanted to do. There was no restriction. Marxism is an insidious ideology. It is doomed on the face of it because you're always assuming on the one hand, I say that to people who think that there might be something to it, right? First of all, they always got one hand in your pocket And secondly, and this is the part that is important, you can't predict who will take over. So even if you say to yourself, oh, look, we have, you know, an angel from on high has come down and implemented this system of Marxism. And now the angel has decided that, you know, whatever it may be, and and all of a sudden this next individual that takes over, and they are the worst form of human being in, in the history of humanity. I mean, who wants someone like Justin Trudeau deciding what you can and cannot say? Who wants a fellow like Nur Muhammad deciding what you can and cannot say? I certainly don't see any redeeming qualities in their characters that would indicate to me that they would do the right thing if push comes to shove. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm, I'm too close to the issue of freedom of speech and perhaps my uh, um, uh, view is slanted. I don't believe that it is, but it's entirely possible. I'm a reasonable individual. You let me know what you think down in the comments. Am I being a reasonable individual or am I being unreasonable? I don't believe that there should be limits on speech because the limits that we have on speech already exist. There are already enough that laws out there to protect you. Now, can you say to me that we should be, it shouldn't be a certain age group going on to a certain website? Absolutely. The thing, the problem with it is, is that we assume that all children are, are holding hands and going kumbaya, but children are nasty. I mean, there are plenty of adults out there in the world who get mad at one another and they don't lash out, right? They don't turn around and say, oh, that's a thing you shouldn't say, right? They might have an argument at work, but otherwise they keep it to themselves. They might have an argument with their mother-in-law, but otherwise they keep it to themselves. Children, on the other hand, do not have that filter. So they'll go to kindergarten and they'll be really mean to each other. They'll go to grade four. Oh, they'll be nice to some, but mean to others. 
So this idea that we will be able to limit that kind of interaction, that we would be able to limit people, children from, from those kind of mean words is kind of inherently flawed in the sense of children can be really mean. Now, this is the justification for Bill C-63, right? It's always about protecting the children, right? And now we're talking, he moved the line over to trans children. So he's really, really desperately clinging to this hope that he can get people to vote for him in the upcoming or that his, their polls will swing because for two weeks, they've been talking about nothing but abortion and trans rights. Now, I don't think that like, I get that there's a, an issue for the trans rights going on all over the country, and we probably should solve that problem. We probably should get to it, and there's, so there's got to be a place to have a discussion on that. However, uh, the abortion question in Canada was settled generation or two ago, and the only way that you're going to dis – you can't write legislation to dislodge it. It's, it's, it's law. It's codified in the, in the criminal code system. So if you're a woman out there and you're listening to this and you think that maybe you're going to vote for the liberals because they said that, just ask yourself this question. Where is it, who do you know that has not had the permission to go and get one on their own? But how much money are you willing to give the government for this right? How much money are you willing to dig? Because they're going to take 50, they're creeping up on taking 50% of your earnings as we sit here. They fly around on jets and they get hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And they're taking every penny that you can get to get their hands on. So you think to yourself, you want to vote for that? I don't understand. The law is already codified. Why would you not want to have more money in your pocket? Whether you be a woman, a man, straight, in, you know, Muslim, I don't care where you're from. Where in your mind do you want to give your hard earned money to a person who's going to spend it in Ukraine, to a person who's just going to throw it away? to a person who's going to go to an island in, in, on Christmas while you cut up a couple of jelly beans because that's all you could get your hands on for you and your family of six. All right. I know I got a little wound up, but I guess it's just the way that I am when it comes to these things. I have a lot of understanding of, of the, the why it's necessary. I've done a lot of deep diving into the subject. And I suppose I should start doing more of it. Clearly, I have a, a clearly I'm a little bit passionate about it, right? And it's time. It's important. We can't let the liberal government do this to us. Liberal. I mean, they're about as close to liberal as I am to you know birth. I mean, it's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.